What's up, people? It's your girl, Adeola. Honestly, I don't even know where to start with the explosion that happened in Lagos on Sunday. NNPC said the explosion was triggered because a trailer hit some gas cylinders at a gas processing plant near oil pipelines in Abuleado. That truck, as eyewitness informed us, that it was, if you look at the truck, you will see hard stones inside. The hard stones were meant to be dropped. So when, this tr when the truck was trying to get out, that, that, that could be you know, as of Sunday, at least 15 people have been confirmed dead, but we know that the death toll is way more than that. Many people were stuck in collapsed buildings because more than 50 houses collapsed, including Bethlehem Girls College. That's a boarding school with students in it. And you know, one of the administrators, Reverend Sister Harienta Aloka, died while saving the children under her care. And because of her, most of the students have been accounted for, some of them with injuries, but the sad thing is the building literally collapsed on her. This newly married couple also died with their baby on the way. A family of four is among the dead. They were on their way to church. This is the building. They were driving out for church service when the explosion occurred. I can't even start counting the number of people that died. And you know the truth is, I feel like many people died after the explosion simply because of the Nigerian factor. I'm trying to say that a lot of people would have made it if not for the Nigerian factor. I'm grateful to all our first responders, our firefighters, our paramedics, but we don't have enough in Nigeria. We are not prepared for any emergencies in Nigeria. We need the government to please invest in more fire trucks, ambulances, and hospitals. Some buildings have been moved to Gangsdale, but under the watch of Mr. Governor, Mr. Babaji Teo, Shona Sawodu, they're on top of it. Sir, a lot of people are still trapped in some of Nobody is trapped. Sir, if you look, if you look at your left, we can see people being rescued from there. We've been shouting about this for God knows how long, but some of the victims were trapped for hours, losing blood. Some people would have survived if we had good emergency service. People were using woods as stretchers to carry the injured. Thank you to everybody that helped, by the way. I mean, Nigerians are amazing. I know that the governor set up a two billion naira relief fund, but we shouldn't have to wait for something like this to happen first. To those who lost their loved ones, I can imagine how you're feeling. I hate seeing Buhari sending condolences for things that could have been prevented. I mean, it has become like a norm now. He's just sending condolences every time. A lot of our officials don't care because they think that they can never be affected. But you know, it's only a matter of time if they don't do the right thing. And please, my people, before you buy a house, make sure that it's not close to oil pipelines or gas plants. Just look at where you have the yellow and black iron that looks like a, a mini gold post. That's an indication, pipe inscription, telling you that there's, a, there's an NMPC pipeline underneath. It's less than 10 centimeters to that wall you can see. And you begin to wonder, why will anybody build houses by the pipeline right of way? Who authorized the land sale. For those who died, may their souls rest in peace. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So the governor of Kano State, Gonduye, a man who is still in a bribe scandal, dethroned the traditional ruler, the Emir of Kano, Namido Sanusi. They said that the governor kicked him out for insubordination. Uh, insubordination is one of them. Uh, doing acts that are tantamount to the destroying the traditional heritage of the Emir Council and uh, doing things that are also against uh, the cultures and the values of uh, Kano, Kano people. My people, regardless of however you feel about Sanusi, I, you know me, I was thinking that the governor should be the one kicked out. You know, put, put him on, my father, you are welcome, you are welcome. So in case you're watching your excellency, you know, people have been saying a lot of things about you. For example, they are saying that you are a thief, not me. I'm just telling you what people are saying, you know. That is why they call you Gandu Dollar, you know. Because, you know, we've seen at least two videos of you collecting bribes from people on video. Allegedly, say you're not allegedly, anywhere. thousands of dollars, an offense that should warrant you being kicked out of office. But because you are friends with the President Buari, Buari now said that the videos were doctored, every one of them. <laughs> Telling us that what we saw was not what we saw, Abra Kadabra, that it was something different. And you know, in case you are watching uh, Mr. President Ogabwari, people are saying that you must be birds of the same feather, you know, that that is why you're cov covering up an alleged thief. 
not me, of course, this is just what people are saying. In fact, in Kano, because Buari did not prosecute or kick out the alleged thief, Gonduje, again, uh, uh, not my words, people of Kano were so mad that they sang for Buari, they said that he owns the thief, he should come and take his thief. <laughs> Nigerians, you are too bold. How can you say something like that about your president? Those people, they are indirectly calling Buari a thief, Benny. I mean, you know, a friend of a thief must be a thief. Nobody. So, so now to see that the alleged thief, sir, in case you're watching, uh, is the one dethroning somebody. He even banned the man from Kano State. They took him to one remote place like that in Asarawa State. We knew this was going to happen, by the way. <laughs> because remember that PDP won the last governorship election in Kano State, but uh, Ganduje allegedly, you know, everything is allegedly, allegedly Really read that election <laughs> and Sanusi did not support him, which was why the governor Ganduje suddenly created four new emirates within Kano, within one Kano. <laughs> and he installed four new emirs. And then later he got the support of the court to remove the emir Sanusi. In fact, Sanusi tried to fight this last year. Shortly after the 2019 general election, Governor Abdullahi Ganduje drops a hint about reforming the state traditional institutions. And subsequently, the Kano Emir's Appointment and Deposition Act was passed into law by the State Assembly. Emir Asanusi challenged the law in court, and it was later amended to Kano Emirate Council Bill 2019. Now, as usual, people have been talking. You know, Nigerians, they like to talk. They said that the real reason that they kicked out Sanusi is because Northern leaders are not happy with the things that Sanusi has been saying lately. These children are not criminals they are victims what verse in the quran allows a father to give birth to a child and leave the child to go and fend for himself the rest of the country cannot be investing educating its children producing graduates and then they watch us they can't get jobs because they come from the wrong state when we have not invested in the education of our own children Thank you, sir. Ah, uh, Mr. Emia, is he lying? I mean, we've been talking about this for years. Thank you so much. Ah, thank you so much. And then he also talks a lot about taking care of the girl child. And you know me, I'm all about the girl child. If I were to advise governors in the Northwest and the Northeast, which girl should they focus on? It's one. And it's a subset of one. Just educate the girl child. Preach, preach, preach. You've got to address cultural attitudes to at what age do girls marry? How many children do girls have? How many wives do men have? Okay, so of course I'm here to defend your excellency, uh, Mr. Emia. But my problem is, I mean, you say a lot of good things. Say you understand, Mr. Emia. You, you always know the right thing to say. Ah, you are very, very eloquent, you know. But, but for me, there, there's a disconnect when it is do as I say, not as I do. This is just me. If you educate the girls, and make sure that they finish secondary school and have skills before they start getting married. They will not have eight children. They, they, they will not accept domestic violence. And they, and they are more likely to stop their husbands from having a second wife than if they didn't have a says a lot of things about how polygamy contributes to poverty in northern Nigeria. Nigeria's influential Muslim leader, the Emir of Kano Lamido Sanosi, is planning to introduce a law which will stop men from taking more than one wife if they do not have the means to support them. If the North does not change, the North will destroy itself. Mm, thank you. Thank you so much. Ah, thank you, my father. In case you're watching, thank you, Jared. Um, as you guys already know, I agree with everything that the MR says, you know, except for the fact that he also practices polygamy, I mean, for wives. But we are not here to discuss that, you know. We are here to talk about the injustice against the MR. So, back to the main issue. As expected, a lot of people side with the disposed MRs. I mean, don't forget that his grandfather was also dethroned in 1963. Can you see simply telling them the truth? That, see, Despite the fact that we have a norms value and the culture, but all these things can still be amended. He is a very, very blunt person. He always says it exactly how it is. 
Thank you, thank you. Honestly, um, Sanusi is very smart. No offense to the people of Kanu, but it would be good to see Sanusi in a position where he could actually touch more lives, you know, and, and also practice some of the things that he talks about, even if it's working with an international organization. I don't think that they will succeed in keeping him down. As it is, he has already sued the DSS, the Inspector General of Police, the Attorney General of Kano, the Attorney General of the Federation. It's, it's your suing everybody, and me, I know that he would win this case. So, now, let's get back to the friend of the thief. I mean, the friend of the alleged thief. I mean, back to Mr. President. Sorry, Mr. President. You know, it's just, there's a lot of slips of tongue going on right now. Um, The Senate has approved another $22 billion external loan requested by Ogabuari, Mr. President. $22 billion. Did I? Did you hear that very well? That is more than 8 trillion naira. Nigerians, how are you sleeping at night? This man is about to sell Nigeria in broad daylight. Ah, oh, brother. Want it tower? Want it tower? This money is coming from China, from the World Bank, from the Islamic Development Bank. Do you know that with this amount that uh, Buhari's government has borrowed and borrowed since he became president, according to Premium Times, even for the next 20 years, we cannot pay it back to China. Even if we get the oil money, which is now collapsing, 2040, we will still be paying this money. No offense, Mr. President, in case you are watching. You know, by 2040, come on. By that time, you would have, I mean, I'm not saying anything. I'm just, I'm just calculating because one plus one will always be two. If the age you, have, you are giving us right now is correct, at least you will be 97 by that time. So why are you destroying the future for those that are coming behind you? A normal father wants to leave something for his children. No, why must you destroy everything? And you know the most heartbreaking thing in this equation when I take a critical look at the peripheral level of this equation is the fact that we don't know what they are doing with all the money that they have been borrowing. Ah! Besides buying themselves fancy cars, of course. I mean, the House of Rep just ordered another 400 brand new Toyota Camry 2020 model. <laughs> I don't understand. And when you go on Toyota's website, you will see that the new Camry 2020 is about $35,000, the, the good model. That, that is before customization, by the way, because they like to customize their cars. So by the time that they customize and pay shipping costs, we are looking at at least $40,000 each for each of these uh, House of Rep members. Multiply that by four. And that is 16 million dollars 5.8 billion naira my people and please tell me what exactly do these people do like what do they do and meanwhile they, they could get brand new cars for much less by patronizing made in nigeria vehicle shouldn't they be the ones patronizing if nobody else is patronizing but they said no they rejected innocent motors which is made in nigeria Habba. This is why Nigerians are saying that Buhari is not only clueless, that he's aiding the corruption that he claims to be fighting against. I'm just telling you, I'm just explaining what people are saying in their homes. Maybe you can explain to people why you are deliberately trying to ruin this country. Mr. President, you guys not doing much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So as you guys know, I don't talk much, but you know, they are still trying to pass that social media bill. <laughs> Sponsored, of course, by my father, Senator Mohamed Sonny Musa in Adewale, in case you are watching. This bill is going to allow the government to cut off internet access or block specific social media platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, and even WhatsApp. I mean, WhatsApp, as my Nigerian people like to call it. Um, they said that they are trying to stop fake news. All of this is in the name of stopping fake news, you know? So not only do they want to control social media, but if you are found guilty you could be fined up to 300,000 naira that is 820 dollars or you could spend up, up to three years in prison and now they are trying to use the same social media to twist our brains you know they are telling us that it's actually not as bad as we think that um, they said that this is actually to protect us from fake news internet falsehoods and manipulation bill seeks to prevent the transmission of deliberate false statements and declaration of facts in nigeria can i just say first of all that the nigerian government and the government parastatals in Nigeria, they are the biggest carriers of fake news. Amen, somebody. Look at the EFCC boss who said that the uh, coronavirus was caused by corruption. My father, uh, Mr. Magu. Uh, EFCC later released a statement that he did not say it. And I strongly believe, Your Excellency, that even coronavirus is caused by corruption. Thank you, Yoda. For am I missing something? Can you play that one more time? Even coronavirus. It's caused by its corruption. Okay, so it, it's so bad now that we see things now in Nigeria and our politicians come out and say, whatever we think we saw, we did not see so. It was just our imagination. <laughs> I mean, it gets worse because the biggest carrier of fake news in Nigeria is actually the presidency. <laughs> Do you guys know how many times that Buhari has told us that he has defeated Boko Haram? So is that not a lie? Because 
Boko Haram is still killing. I don't get it. So we should be talking about banning the Nigerian government, too. not not the not social media. Uh -uh. In fact, the other time, presidential spokesperson Gaba Shew, remember the man said that they've created 12 million jobs. Till today, we are still looking. We've not found where the jobs are. You understand? <laughs> It's so bad that the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, is now popularly known as Laya Mohammed because there's just too many lies, too many lies. And sorry, sir, I'm just telling you what people say behind your back. You know me, I can never say that you are a liar. But second of all, I'm really worried about Nigerian government deciding what is fake news and what is not because from record, they normally brand any news that they don't like as fake news. The only reason that Agba Jalingo was charged with treason and cyber crime, and the only reason he was denied bail for six good months was because he exposed how Governor Ben Ayade uh, of Cross River State embezzled 500 million naira that was earmarked for the establishment of Cross River Microfinance Bank. And they charged him with treason. Can you imagine? I mean, we've seen over and over journalists in Nigeria being arrested, harassed and detained. Premium Times Office has been raided. Their publisher arrested simply because some politicians did not like what they published. So from their record, anything that they don't like, they describe it as fake news. So you want to control WhatsApp? You, they want to control WhatsApp. This is where we are going to fight. How can you cut out WhatsApp? I mean, that is where we get all the juicy news. How else am I supposed to know that uh, a table of salt plus potato can cure headache? You know, there's, there's so many information circulating on WhatsApp. That is the only social life that I have. People keep putting me in groups that I never asked to be put in. I just find myself in all kinds of groups. You cannot ban WhatsApp. The only thing you can ban about WhatsApp is the way Nigerians pronounce it. It is WhatsApp, not WhatsApp. You can ban that. I'm in support of that. And if you give the government the power to ban social media, hey, I don't understand. What do they want people like my uncle, for example, or Kudino Melai? What do they want him to do with his life? The man has to express himself. He has nothing else to do. All those songs, all the latest songs, we get them from his Instagram. No, so the same thing for a common sense senator. It's been a long time. You know, do well. Ah, we haven't seen in, in a while. The man uses social media to tell us how the government should be. You know, the irony of this whole thing is that the man that introduced the bill, the sponsor of my father what is putting back on uh, yes i guess you're watching he also uses social media and by the way if you don't live in nigeria don't think that you're not affected hmm, because they want to block especially you all of you that are doing shows on, on the internet on youtube keeping it keeping it checking it on keeping it something doctor damages ah, all of you they want to ban you <laughs> it seeks to ensure that a person must not do any act in or outside Nigeria in order to transmit false statements that can be prejudicial to the security of Nigerians, any part of Nigeria or Nigeria as a whole. Anyway, Mr. Sponsor Alaji, in case you are watching, they, they, said, they said that you went to have a business school. I said that it must be a joke. <laughs> Because you sound really close-minded. I'm not abusing you, sir, in case you're watching, but you are reasoning backwards, so you understand. First of all, Esa, in case you're watching, you plagiarized the bill from Singapore. If you were using the internet very well, you know, you would have known that um, it is actually wrong. It's an offense to plagiarize. Me, I was thinking that you actually be ashamed of yourself for plagiarizing. I mean, you got caught and you are not ashamed of yourself. You know, I agree. I agree that maybe you don't know how to use social media, <laughs> even though you have a Facebook page and a Twitter account. But, uh, sir, instead of trying to control people maybe you can think of leaving a positive legacy and actually touching lives positively you know all i'm trying to say is that um please just respect yourself sir and drop the bill so you understand thank you so much uh Alanji. we are very grateful you guys don't know much guess what i'm just keeping it wrong so a few weeks ago i introduced you to dr shonowo who performs free surgeries every november in nigeria at his hospital and i told you guys that we're partnering with him to do more free surgeries first of all thank you so much to everybody that has donated towards this cause i am so grateful to every one of you i cannot thank you enough so today i have some updates for you guys dr shonowo is not able to do the free surgeries until june of this year so but we do know that some conditions cannot wait till june so we're still partnering with Dr. Shono Wu to do the surgeries in June of this year. But in the meantime, we have the opportunity to also partner with the Jason Foundation in Nigeria. And they are willing to have a free medical outreach in Ibadan from April 3rd to the 5th. That's in like three weeks. If you don't know Jason Foundation, by the way, at least visit their Facebook page to see some of the amazing works that they've been doing for years. They go to different parts of the world, changing lives for free. So we're really grateful. We're honored that they 
are willing to work with us. Thank you so much, Jason Foundation, on behalf of your girl <laughs> and Colin. We are very, very grateful. And also, thanks to Dr. Sesson Luashola of UCH uh, for arranging all this. Thank you so much, sir. We are so grateful. God bless you. So, this gives us the opportunity to touch more lives. We're still working with Dr. Shonowo in June, but in the meantime, we have the opportunity to touch more lives. So, if you know anyone who needs general medical consultation about any condition, or anyone that needs dental services, psychotherapy, surgeries, and eye care, and they genuinely cannot afford the treatment, please tell them to come to Redeemer's Hospital in Ibadan. It's located in Bodija in Ibadan. The doctors will be there all day, Friday, Saturday, and uh, Sunday, and everything will be free. Please make sure that you register if you need treatment. The last day to register for treatment is March 31st. Yes, people can come from any part of Nigeria for treatment. So we'll be using some of this money that you guys have donated to buy medications for this medical outreach and everything else that they would need, including food. So please, if you would still like to donate, please don't hesitate. The amount of people that we're able to treat depends on the amount of money that we're able to raise. Also, some donors have specified that they want the money that they donated to go to Dr. Shunowo. Don't worry, it would go to Dr. Shunowo. We'll still work with him in June. Transparency has been part of what we do from day one. So please be rest assured that nobody will eat one naira or one dollar out of your donation. But you know, I'm really excited because with your help, we've touched lives in northern part of Nigeria, uh, in the Middle Belt, in the Southeast. Now we, are, we have the opportunity to do something in the Southwest as well. So please, if you or someone that you know needs treatment and they genuinely cannot afford it, make sure that they call one of these numbers so the doctors know what to expect. Also, we're looking for volunteers to help us with the logistics, uh, transportation of medication, of food, people that will engage with patients. We are also looking for doctors and nurses that would volunteer. So if you can spare one day or two days or all three days, please visit our website kawafoundation.org. Click on volunteer. That is where you would register so that we would know who is coming. Sorry, we don't pay volunteers. So, you know, it's a little so <laughs> Personally, I don't like when people travel far. I'm hoping that we can get volunteers from Ibadan because I get worried when people have to travel far to volunteer for us. But, you know, I'm really, really excited about this. Once again, thank you so much Jason Foundation. We're so grateful to you and thank you Dr. Sesson and also thanks to Dr. Shonowo in advance as well because we'll be working with him in June. You guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> So a few weeks ago, I told you guys about the 2020 U.S.-Africa Summit organized by the U.S.-Africa Chamber of Commerce in Dallas, Texas. So because of the coronavirus, of course, they've had to postpone it. And right now they are thinking about holding it in September instead of April. However, you still need to register if you're yet to because this is an opportunity for Africans here in America and also Africans outside of America. Those of you that have visas, you know, so long as you have a business idea, an invention or a product that you want to put out there or services that you think that people will be interested in. If you have a good idea and all that you need is money. Investors are coming to this summit to look for an opportunity to invest. And maybe you've started, but you know that you can expand. They actually like when you've been doing it for some time. But more importantly, if you want to come, please come prepared. Don't just come. Otherwise, you'll go back empty-handed. This is not an event for everybody. This is an event for those who are prepared for success. Remember that success is opportunity meets preparation. Okay? So please prepare your proposals, your business plan, go over your pitch. Don't be scratching your head if an investor should ask you, how do you plan on generating revenue? What are the risks involved? What's your projection? I mean, you need to know your stuff before you come. Also, the price starts at $100 to $5,000. But if you want to get the attention of the investors, you may want to at least get the exhibit table where you can display your your products you know that one is five hundred dollars lastly if you are planning on coming to this event to find investors after getting your ticket please send an email to the organizers they said that they would love to go over your proposal before you even come because they want to make sure that you succeed they would give you advice on how to make it better if you're serious no please send them an email after you get your ticket after you've paid for your ticket like I told you guys I'll be emceeing the summit so I look forward to meeting you guys in Dallas Texas in September I'll let you guys know the date as soon as they know. You guys not doing much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So as you 
guys know we now have coronavirus in at least 114 countries that's scary so many countries have shut down schools and any public gatherings the health minister in uk tested positive italy and rwanda have banned public gatherings some countries in europe now pay parents to stay at home with their children i'm like what i'm sure you guys saw the, the state health minister of uganda begging her citizens to stop traveling to china those people who are still in china please don't come Stay there until when we hear things are okay. We are also saying, requesting, in fact, begging that Ugandans who are still here in Uganda, please don't go to China. We are also saying those in China, stay there. We can't handle. The woman cannot handle. In China, public transport is stopped. People are living behind doors. They, they call it self. Self. He called self. Self, why is nobody helping the minister? They are doing self isolation in China. If China, a second, a second biggest economy in the world, is failing to manage this, if it came in Uganda, can we? Can we manage? Wow, she didn't even form. <laughs> You know the form. She just said it categorically. We cannot manage this. But despite what the state health minister said, do you guys know that Uganda says they now have the cure for coronavirus? A professor who uh, who manufactured a, a treatment for coronavirus in the U.S. was here last week, and he has granted the patent to Uganda. And within a fortnight, the treatment will be made here. It will be available on the market here in Uganda. Within a fortnight, it's being made by. Uh, a uh, company called Day International, a young man from uh, Busoga. Yes. Uh, so, not that we should be relaxed, but uh, there is hope and the, the treatment will start here in Uganda. You can imagine. Okay, so some people are saying that they are trying to use Ugandans to test this product. Let me know what you guys think about that. The good thing is Nigerian politicians are no longer going abroad for treatment. Have you guys noticed? <laughs> in fact, Buhari has not traveled in a while. Now he has time to go to Agungu Fish Festival in Kebi. <laughs> did you guys see that? Oh, by the way, did you see the video of the man who allegedly attacked him in Kebi? Me, I think the man was just trying to take photos, you know? <laughs> Meanwhile, people are circulating all kinds of lies about how to cure coronavirus. You know, last week we went over pepper soup. <laughs> We went over pepper soup and then of course our man of god was going to just has he landed we don't know okay so but we have the man of god that was going to destroy coronavirus can you imagine that some people are saying that drinking bleach is a cure for corona ah, father please do not drink bleach if you don't want to go before your time others are saying that cocaine is a cure for coronavirus i said the devil is a liar the cocaine industry will just explode now the only Thing that cocaine will do for you is to kill your money not the coronavirus also some people are saying that garlic can kill coronavirus i don't believe that <laughs> please stop stop just stop eating too many garlic some people cannot stand the smell of garlic <laughs> garlic is great it's very very good for the body i'm just speaking on behalf of some people some people don't like to smell garlic please know that that is not true but you know i like to give a huge shout out to nigerian government and especially the nigerian doctors for how they've been able to handle this coronavirus so far in nigeria honestly they're doing an amazing job we've only had two cases even the italian guy is doing much better and everybody else that he had contact with that were quarantined they've all been discharged and huge shout out to the nigerian doctor that went to china during this outbreak to study the virus and how it's affecting people is the head of the Nigerian Center for Disease Control that is Dr. Chikwe Iyekwazu. Thank you so much sir for literally risking your life in order to save lives in Nigeria. This man was in China at the heat of this whole thing just to to study the virus and to know how it affects people and that's how they've been able to curtail it so far in Nigeria. When he came back from China he was in quarantine for 14 days and then he's the one that has been championing this whole fight against coronavirus in Nigeria. Thank you so much, sir. I mean, Nigerian doctors, they are doing amazing things. I don't know if the government is recognizing him for what he did, but honestly, he's a hero. Thank you so much, sir. Lastly, the rumor has been circulating, actually, it's now like a theory that black people cannot get coronavirus. Okay? <laughs> 
father. Oh, my people, please don't expose yourself to coronavirus knowingly because you think that black people are immune to coronavirus. Let me know what you guys. <laughs> think in the comment below don't just say yes or no please give us a reasonable reason if that makes sense i'm i'm really looking forward to reading you guys this comment you guys know i don't know much guess what i'm just keeping it real <laughs> call it all i'll call you back what's up my people is your girl yes i send money to nigeria all the time both to support my family and to support the foundation i've tried lots of ways stores apps banks but they were too expensive and so time consuming so when i heard about send wave i was skeptical at first let me be real with you guys <laughs> it sounded too good to be true and i didn't trust it but once i tried it um uh, there was no going back they deliver within the minute as in one shot proper you send it and they receive it instantly oh shit and they are always the cheapest in fact you don't pay any transaction fees you get what i'm saying <laughs> that's amazing and then they have very competitive rates so sometimes you will think that the competitors may look cheaper but with the fees that they are always charging they are more expensive on top of that they are secure all my data is heavily encrypted and they have a dedicated fraud and security team to keep me and my money safe ah you get what i'm saying you see that's why i trust sendwave to send my money whether i'm up in the mountains or whether i'm home relaxing my people try sendwave hey your life will never remain the same Alright y'all, it's been real and I'm keeping it right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And if you yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please be sure that you do that. Until next time, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.